now and we're going live now. Great. Ready to roll? Ready to roll. I'm going to find it, share it, post a watch party. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Thanks again for joining me. I appreciate you. Appreciate yeah, I always love chatting with you. This is so great and I love what you're doing. So there we are. We're live. We are live. Let's see. Did it show up on yours? Yep. Awesome. I'm going to share it right now. Let's see here. It always takes a minute and there's always a lag of people trying to right. figure technology out. Let's see. We're going to do a share to me. Uh, share now. Awesome. And you, all right, let's see. I'm going to host a little watch party. Here we go. Awesome. Ready to roll? Ready to roll. Let's awesome. hit it. Miss Heather Simpson, thank you for joining Hi. me today. Thank you for having me. I really, truly always love talking to you. So thanks for the opportunity and for making time on a Saturday. This is great. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've got. I think I grabbed the wrong cup. It says, oh, I thought it said Mr. Always Right, but I got the, the wrong one here. No, you grabbed the right one. <laughs> Mrs. Right. Okay, awesome. That's me. That's me. Well, well, thank you for joining me on the Building Belly and Pivot series. You've been on once before in the group setting. Um, and really, our whole, our whole focus is, is how do we use our experiences? How do we network together in our local business community and uh, leadership community to uh, focus on what we can control and keep moving forward. And really, I think Wes knocked, knocked it right out of the park when he said that it's like a basketball pivot, right? We keep our foot grounded on our brand right, and stay versatile to how we move, right? That's a good analogy. Yes, so, absolutely. So, good. so tell us about you. Who are you? We've had you on the Building Bellingham show before. Tell us about who you are, what you do, and what, what's, what life is like right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, so much to unpack there. I'm Heather Simpson. I am the founder and director of a group here called She Leads Me. Oh yeah, we've had you on the Building Bellingham show before. You're good, you're good. Keep going. That is devoted to um, providing resources for women um, in a various, uh, a variety of different ways and platforms to help these women grow on their journey and their evolution into like the next Stage of their life and their career. And so, you know, before coronavirus, we hosted a lot of in-person events. And so now that has shifted and changed to more of the online space. But that is a lot of what we do. Also providing workshops and trainings and education um, just to help these women grow as individuals um, in personal and in business life. Um, and so, yeah, life has looked a lot different, both at home and in business, since uh, everything has kind of hit, since we're staying home, since we're quarantining, and uh, since, you know, we're focusing on, like, the health and wellness of our city and our county, um, and we've had to make a lot of shifts. We've had to figure out how to really, truly engage like we do in person and take that and create that feeling online when you don't have that energy around people and you don't have like the ability just to like give someone a hug and welcome them in that way, right? So we've had to make a lot of shifts and um, and then there's home life too, right? Which just like adds into the mix of everything. So yeah, so it's quite a, it's quite an interesting time right now to be anything in business a mom like you know with my children and trying to homeschool it's just we're all shifting in so many different ways right now it's uh it's it can make your head spin a little bit right <laughs> absolutely no yeah that's there's there's so much that's uh that's being balanced right now you know personal business friendship family life all of the above and you know it's interesting because when we first were, were, had this coronavirus um, that landed on our laps, right? Everybody just, it's halted everybody. Interestingly enough, the first thing that was kind of gone after was, hey, group settings, we're gonna, we're gonna keep narrowing down this, and your, and your goal is to keep growing your group setting at a quali mm -hmm. quality rate, right? So having mm -hmm. the right yeah. people there, obviously, is, is key, I know, for your business, but you're trying to grow that. Like, you want to grow this, and you wanna empower more people, more women, but you're being told that you have to, to reduce that. Tell me about your first thoughts when you're like, ah, my first, my, my thing. 
Yeah, well, it, it came at an interesting time because in March, we actually had um, like a record breaking gathering for us. So we were able to have that meeting, I think it was like a week prior to them really starting to restrict gatherings. So we had this incredible panel event with four amazing local business leaders coming and sharing to 75 other people, that just like all of this amazing stuff. And to have that high and figure out like, okay, now like what's our strategy to like continue to provide this value, to continue to engage with these women that showed up and, and to thank them for coming and to like keep them engaged with us and show them that we provide value um, for the first timers, right? And then to have to immediately like pump the brakes and go, oh, okay, actually we can't do that in April. Like we can't have our regularly scheduled meetups. We can't, you know, we had a meetup scheduled for Make Worth Market like right after that. And, and so it was just this interesting time of like, we gained such momentum. We've been having our regular in-person events for a year and a half now. And then it was just like everything halting the ability to do that. Um, so it, it was a really just, it took me a minute to really think about what that means. Because I think initially, too, we all just thought it was going to be a couple weeks. And then <laughs> we were going to be able to go back to normal life for whatever reason. So it, uh, it, I really had to like ground myself in getting back to like what our purpose of these gatherings were, like what is our mission and how now, like what is the vehicle to accomplish that um, when we have some more restrictions. Mm -hmm. And we always have restrictions, right? Whether it's budget, space availability, like for us as like we speaking specifically to events, like there's always limitations and boundaries. Um, so I really had to shift my thinking to, to instead of like, poor me, you know, this disease is taking this away from me and, and just thinking of it as, okay, this is just another like boundary that we just have to work around and still carry forth with our mission. That's so, huge. Yeah. So, and I know you're huge on mindset and we've talked a lot about mindset and I think that's I mean, that's our strongest muscle in our body is our, is our mind, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, tell me a little bit more about how, how do you, like, especially you're not just leading other people, but you're, you're leading yourself and you're leading your family. Um, what is that like when you're feeling anxiety or feeling despair or feeling like for someone like you that loves to plan things out that you yeah. don't have what you need planned out or you don't have control? How do you, how do you handle that? What, what are some, what are some processes or or, or mantras that you might have to keep that mindset like a steel trap? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's always in practice, right? Like it's never perfect, but um, typically when I find myself kind of spiraling like in anxiety of unknown um, and not being able to, to have like the normal control over a certain situation that I'm used to, um, really tapping into like what it is that I'm feeling and what's triggering that and really thinking through the framework. And I use this so much, like if you've heard, like if you've been to any of our stuff, you've probably heard me say this, but um, I run through the three, um, like the trifecta of I think I feel I need. And so this goes for myself and communicating with, with myself and my mindset or also in my communication with others. Um, what am I feeling or what am I thinking about a certain situation or a conversation or an event or whatever it is and then taking it to that third step which is what do I need um, is really key and important that I walk away with action steps to be able to figure out how I accomplish what I'm looking to accomplish right mm -hmm. and it's similar to like the thought process of, okay, what can I control right now? And then acting accordingly. Um, and it's, it takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of reminding myself to go back to that space. And when I find myself getting out of control in my thoughts, I have to pull myself back there um, to that, like that is my grounding place. And then I also really take a look at what am I allowing to feed in to me right now? So what's feeding, is there anything feeding into the fear that I'm feeling or the uncertainty or the anxiety? And 
look you get specific at is what you're saying you get really specific not just like what's the general why do i generally feel this way but what is this what are some specific things that are going on in my life right now that are a filter making that happen is that right yes yeah. yes um and then looking at what's contributing to that and adding to that and how i make that different so right now there is such like an influx of information that we could tap into specifically about the state of our economy or the state of the health right of the entire world or the nation or however specific you want to get and i choose which information i want to let in and and i choose that by way of like how will this serve me um and so I make sure to really limit like my intake of anxiety producing things. And then also make sure that I'm combating my natural um, like mind state and just like in it's when I'm not focusing on anything, just like where your mind kind of goes, I help strengthen um, my mind by reading a lot. So I always have a book. So right now I'm in a book club with a couple of other really amazing women and we are reading a book called The Art of Gathering. We can't gather right now, but we're still preparing for the future and we're still equipping ourselves with good stuff in to make sure that we're emotionally and mentally and then eventually physically able to show up in that space. So there's a a lot of things that anybody can do but really going back to that like trifecta of me of like the think feel need is my grounding place and then i take action from there yeah it simplifies things right yeah mm -hmm. so i mean it sounds like you're still being proactive and i know that's kind of like a uh duh i'm still being proactive. <laughs> but with i think these are the type of moments and, and maybe you can shed a little bit more light on how this moment is, is for you but um, where we have the ability to, I mean, either treat it as a snow day, as Ben's been t calling it, it's not a snow day, or or treat it like an opportunity to focus on that someday maybe list. What, what have been some things for you um, while you're cooped up and the snow's out, you know, metaphorically, um, that you have been focusing on that are going to actually change your business for the better in the future? Like, what have you been forced to do that you weren't going to do because you were working in the business too much? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, first and foremost, I went back to um, my business plan to see where things needed to be shifted. As we do plan events, um, a lot of that stuff just got pushed to later into my year, like about very specific things that we do for events that we host. And other things that were more project-based that were later in the year has been focused on now. So a lot of the content creation stuff um, is now what the focus is. And again, kind of like seeing the opportunity that lies here. Um, and this was something that like hit my thought process so almost immediately when all of this stuff went down and everybody processes differently and, and this is, you know, this situation impacts people on a, a variety of different levels. And my first thought was, you know, a lot of us have been asking for this, right? Like we, in our conversations, we're like, oh, we're so busy. We just can't wait for the day where we get to like relax and take a breath. And like the world is collectively literally taking a breath together um, for the most part. Like there are some people that really have to go into like kick into high gear survival mode, but there's really a lot of opportunity here. So shifting the thinking to focusing on what in what ways can i still propel my business forward again with a different vehicle um and going to that place and just getting more in my creative zone which is a zone that i don't get to tap into a lot when i'm working in the business right it's something that i only can tap into when i'm working on it um, and so seeing the opportunity for what's there and and realigning my actions and using the guide that I've already created myself, my business plan, my mission, my vision, and just adjusting accordingly. Yeah, absolutely. You, you touched on content creation too. Um, and I think 
we talk a lot about this and how important as a, a business owner or a leader of a movement, how important is this time right now when we have that ability to focus on the creative element of our business, the someday maybe list, the thing that we just don't have the time for right now, um, but we do actually have the time now. How important is uh, content creation in today's day and age? I, I mean, I think it depends on your mission and vision, right? Um, there is this like overwhelming sense of like guilt that is out there right now that like, I have to be doing this, I have to be doing that, this, like create the content. Um, but I know that that's important for me specifically because my two biggest things that I had set for my business for the first two years was creating massive amounts of value and providing the most amount of impact. And so when I take that and I figure out the how, creating content for me is very key in that. And I think it's key for a lot of people, but they don't understand the why they're doing it. They just feel like they should because they have the time. And so um, I think that people need to dig deep a little bit on that to make sure that that's for them. Like I know for me and I know for you, like clearly this creates like such energy in us to create this for people and for the people that it's draining on because it's just like this over loop, like this just big task of like having to create content. Um, they don't, they don't have a clear purpose why and they're just doing it because they think they have to do it. If that makes any sense. So Absolutely. Yes, content is important, but you really have to know why you're doing it and it has to align. Otherwise it's, it's not going to go as far as it could go. You're talking about having intention, um, yes. which I know is like, again, I, I don't want this to be kind of a uh, cliche business conversation, but truly intention is so like if you, what you're talking about is if you don't have intention with your content, all of a sudden you're just putting stuff out there that's not authentically you. This is about how you can present yourself authentically when you can't interact with people in person, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And so for us, we've had to run through the funnels of like, okay, we have this awesome platform, Zoom. We have the ability to integrate it with Facebook Live or YouTube Live or whatever it is that we want to do. And so to take intention one step further for us, right, like as our goal with our events has been to gather people, I also have to really think intentionally and thoughtfully about how we show up with that content. So is it in webinar format? Do we see everyone's faces? Are we asking for engagement like by seeing people and hearing their voice? Or is it through comments and stuff? Like taking that intention with your content creation even one step further, I think is also a mark that a lot of people are missing. And we put a lot of intention into the various different types of in-person gatherings and now virtual gatherings that we're doing um, to create the impact that we want it to have for people. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more with you. And, and you know, it's, it's funny because when, when Wes came on the, the show, he talked about having a, the drive-through is what saved him. So I've been using drive-through as a metaphor. <laughs> yeah. like, what's your drive-through? Because there's, there's many businesses that have had to resort to some sort of creative way to provide the same service, mm -hmm. um, but in a different way. So, you know, jalapenos is delivering margaritas and that's amazing and dangerous. And yes. <laughs> but I mean, but for, for you, what is your drive through? What is, what is the thing that you're relying on now at this point, whether you planned it or not, what is your drive through? Um, what I'm going to, what I'm creating right now that is actually not actively out there, but it will be next week is um, my drive through will be taking the expertise that people hire me for one-on-one -on -one and presenting and providing um, strategy sessions for people. So that is going to be my drive through. Um, and it's taken me these weeks to really make sure that I do that in the way that I want to, because that's what I do in like my eight to five Monday through Friday, like in my traditional, like job hours is providing people those resources. Um, but I have limited capacity. I've had limited capacity in the, in the past because of the way that how many people I've chosen to help serve, the um, in-person like nature of that and me going to these people's businesses. And so now my drive-through will be offering that. Some people just need to like 
talk and brain dump about their business for half an hour, hour, hour and a half, and help somebody else see where they can build strength in their business. And so that's what will be happening next week. <laughs> My drive throughs in construction. Right. Hey, most people's drive through, but this is a perfect yeah. time to construct your drive through if you don't mm -hmm. already have it. And you're talking, it's interesting with the coaching and we don't have to dive too far into this, but you're talking about your different consultation uh, strategies with pe different types of people. So you've got one type of person that just wants to brain dump and they're going to probably self actualize based on the questions you help ask. Them. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be the person that is every detail of the way you have to pull another piece of information out so you can help them build, keep building on that. Yes. So that sounds like a fun drive through to be, to be construction, but it's a perfect time to be doing it. Right. It is. Yeah. And, and a lot of people have the answers themselves, right? Like in my position as like a consultant, it's not, you know, they're not hiring me to be their boss. I'm like helping them yep. pull out what's already inside of them and find those answers. Um, because I truly believe that like, you know, going back to even content creation, like the intention behind it, it has to align with you. It has to align with like what your mission, your mission and vision is right. to have it be a success for you. And so that's what my style is all about. And I'm, I'm really excited to be able to get to do that, um, in this new capacity. So it's going to be, it's going to be really great. Awesome. Yeah. So as for, for you, you're a planner. Um, we've talked <laughs> yes, a lot about I this. Am. Uh -huh. you're, you're a big planner. Uh -huh. um, and, and, and you've been through many experiences in your life, um, up and down, personally, financially, everything. For, for a lot of people out there right now, I think a big concern is money. And I think, mm -hmm. I think it has a negative connotation or negative implication. People have this weird relationship with money, but there's a way of help, having that healthy relationship with money. And to talk about that, for a planner, how do you weatherproof your business? How do you weatherproof your life? How do you get to a point where you're like, able to build a business and continue to build a business because in the grand scheme of things, she leads me is, is young. It feels like it's been going for a lot longer, right? But because it's mm -hmm. been so successful, right. but it still is so young in the world, in the world of running a business. How do you, how have you weatherproofed it? How have you weatherproofed your life to, or at least tried to weatherproof? Cause we're not, we can say we weather weatherproof, but I mean, there's still leaks. Right. There's the certain things you can't yeah, prepare for. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing for me is relying on my number one asset and making sure that that is protected and taken care of above all. And I know that that's me. So I make sure that I am able to tap into those places that I'm able to create the space for myself to have creative flow, to figure out how to pivot in this time, to have the space to be able to be there for my kids in the way that they need right now. And then also be able to be resourceful and find the other things to fill in the blanks of all of the things that I can't fill. So I have gotten to know myself really, really well. I know my strengths. I know my weaknesses and I act accordingly and continuing to take care of myself is the biggest thing that I can do. So weatherproof, my family and whatever it is that we go through and my business and whatever it is that we go through. And that's, that's the biggest thing that I do. Um, paired with getting additional um, like consults from people that are like professionals in different areas and making sure that I have trusted people that I go to that at any point along the way, they're helping me poke holes um, so that I can be more prepared and build myself as a business and as a leader for times like this. And that hasn't necessarily happened because of one thing. One thing, it's all of the little tiny things that have happened along my career that have helped me be at more of like the resilient place that I am today because of that history, because of that experience, and because of protecting my number one asset, which is me. That's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's truly taking it down to the core of focusing on what you can control. And, you know, you and I also talk a lot about health. And I know that mm -hmm. um, if we're talking about uh, treating or, or putting as much energy and resources into, the, into your number one asset, which is you, and, and this is for people that are listening, what are some things that, that you do on a daily basis 
uh, mental health, physical health, like eating healthy. I mean, what do you do? Drinking lots of water, showing up to like sleep. What are all the, what, what's, what are the, the components that make up the successful day for Heather, especially right now? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I, it really comes in seasons, right? So um, I was actually talking with a couple of really good friends that, you know, for those of us that like went through the really hard process of like years of figuring out like what is the perfect like morning routine for Heather or for this person or for that person, right? Like there's this group of people that I regularly connect with and, and we had that like dialed down. <laughs> And now, like, my gym is taken away. Like, now, like, there are certain aspects about that that just couldn't exist in the way that I had determined, like, were the things for me. So I think that it's also really important to, as we, as we think about those things, that it does come in waves and seasons. And so right now, that season for me um, and, and the things that I do for those is leaning in even more so to connection with people um, because I can't see people face to face. I can't see my family. I'm really leaning into ways of connection. And so that serves me on an emotional level. That serves me on a mental level, mental wellness, and so which then helps me feel better physically, right? So right now I'm really leaning into that um, it's my nephew's second birthday today, and so my daughter and I made matching, like, cupcakes, like, Elmo cupcakes. We went and delivered them to all of our family members all over town, and today we're going to, like, celebrate over Zoom. So that was an initiative that I took to help us all feel connected and to lean in, even though we can't be together. Um, I recently ordered this, like, very motivational like gallon jug thing that has like the different times of day to like drink your water and it's like all these little motivational sayings and so that's been something that for me lately has just been if I accomplish drinking a gallon of water every single day that helps me feel better that helps just like my mental clarity as I'm creating more um, and then also moving my body still so you know our homes right now are like the melting pot of everything um, and so I'm actually physically moving my body into different spaces into my home for different things that I accomplish and also making sure that I'm exercising by walking and doing whatever free home workout videos I can find um, which again helps all three of those areas physical emotional mental um, so those are the things right now that I am finding that I'm helping me navigate through life in COVID-19 um, you know, life before that looked very different. And so being able to evolve and adapt in that is also important because it's not all gone. But I think at first for me, it was like, oh, my routine that I worked so hard for is just gone. And yep. so having to shift and pivot and to find the new routine for myself for right now has been really important in that way. So those are the things that I do for all of those different areas. And um, it's been really helpful to find that um, and keep myself grounded right now. Yeah, that all of that, all of the physical, the physical and emotional health lead into mental health, or mm -hmm. vice versa. They're all pretty mm -hmm. symbiotic, right? And yeah, that's that's amazing. So it, it's 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 just focusing on those things that you can control, which are right here, right now. Um, mm -hmm. I want to talk about how do we like in times like this, businesses have to be expandable and contractible, right? That's 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 the survival of a business. What does it look like for you? How, how have you created a system, even just like your, your, personal, your personal finance, how have you created a system so you can lean down if you need to, you can expand if you need to, what, is, what does that process look like for you? And, or, and it's okay if you're still figuring it out, because I'm still figuring it out. Like, yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, just like logistically as a business, like our overhead is pretty minimal, especially when we're not operating in person events. So um, having to like, lean up like on the expense side of my business that's naturally just happened <laughs> because we can't host events um and so i'm looking for other ways to like invest into our platform to be able to still expand and grow but again in just a different way right so um i still have my big plans um which include an actual physical space like which includes like creating 
that for women to be able to, to go into. So I'm still planning that, even though my current circumstances don't, I, I can't do that. Um, but I'm, I'm still planning for that future because that is still a vision that's there for me. And then, you know, the, the rest of, at least for my business, it's been um, really easy to not have expenses. It's also been really easy. There's a lot of things right now asking for everybody's attention of like, buy me, this is what you need. This will solve all your problems. Um, and so with that, I really had to be very, again, intentional about what it is that I am investing for my business and doing my research and not just purchasing something to help me feel good right in the moment, but know that it's an actual good investment to try and weave into my business so that it will help build the future um, of, of my company. Yeah. No, that's yeah. that's huge. Yeah. Yeah, no, that that that's so interesting. And as I've been, you know, talking with more and more people through this this platform, it's so interesting to see the people that are surviving. Which there's a lot of people that are surviving, and I don't mean survival in a negative way. I mean surviving like, nope. Either way, the only way is forward. It's not going to be pretty, but it's going to be forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting to see like when we get into a situation where our economy like mostly shuts down in some in a, in a lot of ways it's so isn't it so interesting to see that you start to you start to find out like how certain businesses operate when they're forced to shut down how like you, you your expenses were forced to be cut because you weren't doing the thing that caused you to have expenses but right. there's no like there's not that many residual expenses besides your own personal expenses right yeah absolutely yeah. so you're talking a little bit about bells and whistles and i think um, and we can dive into this as much as you'd like, but one of the things I find fascinating is like, uh, you know, someone like you or me or, um, you know, Ben Kinney is, is a good example of, of this where, you know, the, the wave goes up and down. We have good months and we have bad months, you know, no matter how much work we put into our business. And then some people tend to like the, the trend, the, the trend tends to, the average person tends to go, oh, I made more money. I'm going to go spend more money. Mm -hmm. How do you keep that, like that wave, um, your, your line, which is how much you're spending your personal expenses, uh, and then how much you're making, how do you keep that consistent so that you can continue to grow and stay profitable? Well, I'm pretty, I spent a lot of time establishing the things that I know that I need to be a successful human, like on the personal side. Right. And so what I allocate for in my personal expenses to make sure that I'm operating at the Heather Simpson to like run the She Leads Me of the Future and like run my family and all of that. Um, I have planned for those things in like an annual like budget. So for me, that's a lot of travel, which I can't do right now. So I'm actually saving some money, which is great. Um, <laughs> but those are, um, I really established for myself, like what are the needs are and then like what my goals are, right? So my partner and I, like we have goals that we want to achieve and we want to meet. And, um, you know, we have like a timeline in which like we want to meet them and that could be, um, the like financial health of us that could be house projects that could be you know uh, what our future travel like whatever it is we want to do our cabin we want to build in the woods like and so we have gotten pretty clear on those things and so I just act accordingly it's reverse engineering like what do I want my life to look like and then figuring out how to get there and everybody has a different process and path that will take them there um, but I keep that in mind, like, as I'm moving forward. Now, sometimes the very big picture of she leads me because I am a dreamer. I am somebody that will go for it until I'm told no. Um, sometimes those dreams, goals, visions paired with the reality of like the financial investment of that changes how that happens, right? Changes the timeline of how it happens. Maybe I want to do that a lot faster, but because of the investment in that, I can't do it as fast as I want to do. So there's definitely times where there's a little bit of conflict with the very, you know, um, growth minded, like everything is possible, Heather versus 
the Heather that needs to be very financially responsible to not only my business and the future of the business, but then also my family that relies on me to be that person as well. Um, so it takes a, a, everything, like common theme here, takes a lot of knowing who you are and like that self-discovery. And so that's, that's what I've done to help align all of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing a, a theme with you and I, I think we've definitely talked about this a lot. And that's the, the, the more clear you are with who you are and what you want, what you need and what your strengths are, all of these other things fall into place. And then also with your financial goals, what I'm hearing is some sort of, as, 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 as experiential advice from you is that when you have a goal and when you have it set and you're clear on what that, what that is, it makes your decisions in the, in, in, in the now very easy because you know what that, what outcome or what route you'll need, you'll need to take with this particular decision right now to get to mm -hmm. that goal. So setting mm -hmm. those goals, knowing who you are and how you operate will show you how to operate and how to move forward. Is that pretty accurate? Yeah. And, and it takes some discipline, right? Because there's always like going to be the shiny thing that like pops up there like, man, that would be so awesome to go do, or that is the thing that I need. And so it does take discipline to have to pause and really make sure that it's aligned in all of the ways. So it's not, it's, it's not necessarily so easy for me to say no, like, nope, this doesn't align. Like it is sometimes this internal like wrestle of having to go through the exercise of determining what um, the goal and purpose is of that specific thing in front of my face. Um, but yes, it is a lot of alignment and, and it does become easier and more clear um, paired with pausing and discipline. Yeah, absolutely. And kind of on a similar subject, um, we've also talked a lot about um, focusing on who we allow into our lives, mm -hmm. the people that we surround ourselves with. And, and, you know, a lot of the times we're so in the moment, we're go, we're in the business, we're running, we're in the life, we're doing our thing. So we're not necessarily focused, like really being cognizant and aware and observing, does this person provide value to my life? And it's not monetary value. It's like, it, it could be any type of value in mm -hmm. my opinion. What does this relationship look like for you? What, is, what has been your experience? And maybe what is some experience you can share with people that are listening? How have you really got, gotten good at removing people from your life that are not a good influence, especially in a time like right now? Mm -hmm. um, and how have you gotten really good at identifying the people that do truly bring value to your life? Great questions. Um, you know, a lot of it is just it's just like experiencing people, right? And how they show up. People give us clues. Um, we're able to see if somebody shows up in, in one way and you kind of like get this perception of them and you think that something's going to go a certain way, but then it kind of always ends up like derailing to something different or it's always leaving you kind of feeling off or questioning. In the past, we've been pretty busy. It's easier to kind of like disregard those clues. Um, now we have a lot of time to process and think especially because we can't be physically around these people. So for me, specifically, um, it's been really, I, I am such a giver. It's very easy for me to give to a lot of people and then be kind of left feeling like, um, sometimes I can feel used, right? Like when you when I do that kind of haphazardly, when I'm not really tuning into are these the right people to be investing my time and energy and friendship into um, business and personal, right? Like not everybody is my client. Not everybody is going to be the perfect fit for me. And I think it's really important for us to identify and know that um, because it will really help make both your personal life and business life more successful. I look for people's clues. I watch how people also show up and engage and really check to see how that leaves me feeling. Do I feel drained every single time I talk and communicate to this person? Does every single conversation in a friendship sense end up being all about them and never once checking in about how I'm doing? Like, do I know more about what's going on in their life than they know about what's going on in mine? Those are all things that there might be seasons where that's necessary. 
someone's going through a hard time, absolutely I will show up. It's all, it's all about you, happy to be there, happy to be a support. But if I'm not also getting fed in the ways that I need to make it a more like well-rounded relationship, then that's where I get to reflect and make the choice for myself to choose to hit pause, to choose to kind of disengage from that and focus my energy and efforts on the things that will fill my cup and, and feed me in certain ways. And it, it takes, it's taken me a while to find my core group of people now. And that's not to say that my core group of people in the past haven't served me because I was a different Heather back then. And this Heather needs the people in my life now, right? So that's kind of the thought process that I use in going through that. And, you know, as we do evolve, like sometimes there are people that we do leave behind in that. And that's never an easy thing to realize. It's always hard to like mourn the loss of what was. But the type of people and the circles that I'm in and the women that show up to my events and our events for, they have that growth mindset. They know that they're evolving. And so that's just operating at a completely different level um, than, than others. And so keeping myself with like-minded people is really, really important for my growth, for my evolution, for my ability to be the best leader and to be the best partner, mom, everything. Like it all goes into that. Um, and so it's, it's not a perfect science but it is a little bit of an art of having to be intuitive as to what your needs are. If I don't know what my needs are, I'm not going to be able to find the answers from the people around me. Um, so again, it's, it's self-discovery. Um, and, and the fact that it's self-discovery, right? Yeah. It, it, it's the, how do you know what you need in a person if you don't know what you need? Like you're, you you're not going to find that. Like you have to do that work for yourself. Otherwise you're just going to end up with kind of maybe a little meaningful, but kind of like just mediocre friendships. And for me, that's not where I can operate from. I don't have the freedom to just kind of have some haphazard relationships in my life. Right. Yeah. No longer so. have that time or energy to operate, especially when you're operating at such a high level personally business everything another thing that's it's kind of i've come to find actual beauty in it which is that not everyone likes you or i not everyone likes me and i don't like everybody and right. that's okay and that's okay yeah <laughs> and it doesn't mean that you like hate each other or it, it just means that you just don't gel maybe it's the wrong time in life maybe it was the wrong moment maybe it was something it started off with a, a a bad start and i mean whatever i mean that's the beauty of it too is just like not feeling any sort of guilt or obligation to if something's not working to just say you know what this is not working this is not really what i need right now but it comes back right. to what we're talking about with authentically staying grounded who you are yeah absolutely yeah. and i've had situations where people that like i've known in the past like we just haven't gelled at that time for who we were or at that place and then later in life it was like Oh, like it just, it's a completely different experience when we were around each other. Yep. And that's the beauty of all of us evolving. And again, like I, I know that it would be crazy making for me to try to worry about everyone liking me yep. and for trying to worry about my business being for every single female out there. And, but what about the guys that are offended? Cause they can't come to our events, right? Like what about the thing? Like I have like in order to, for me to be successful, it's okay that I'm for certain people and not for others. Yep. And that's just it. Like, that's just it. So. Heather, thank you so much for sharing today. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more of a lens inside your world right now. Um, I always love sitting down with you and, and just talking about life and getting a better idea of, um, you know, bigger, bigger mindset uh, focuses that both of us have. And so thank you for sharing with our, our, listen, our audience, our listener base. So much appreciate that. Thanks for joining me uh, on the Building Belly and Pivot series where we talk about what we can control, right? And yeah. just focus on the bigger picture moving forward. We're all, we're all going to get through this. Um, any final Absolutely. words before we, we uh, sign off here? Well, I do want to thank you for providing us as a platform, not only for me to come participate in, but also for me to be able to learn from, right? Like as I've chatted about a lot today, like 
I am very intentional about what I allow in my life. And I am very thankful that you are creating something that has just high quality content for me to engage in and help me grow as a person during this. So thank you for that. And for everyone else that is tuning in um, for the various different reasons, like a lot of people are some days having really good days, some days like it's just like the roller coaster of like, I feel so strong and confident and I don't know what the F I'm doing right now, right? Like every place that you're at is okay. And I don't think that people are being validated enough in their feelings and emotions and experiences right now. So I want to provide that to whoever's listening because wherever you're at, that's okay. And I hope that Leo and I have met you there today to like help you through this time. And um, again, just appreciate the opportunity. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time and energy and, and, uh, and uh, just being a good friend and, and uh, yeah, absolutely. Have grace. Everyone needs to have grace for their, themselves and other people. And um, mm -hmm. we can still operate. We can still, there's so much opportunity. So thank you again so much for joining yes, me. Thank We're you. signing off live right now. Thanks everyone for joining us today. Bye. And we are no longer live.